The next point counterpoint is surgery versus brachytherapy for intermediate and high risk disease. And again, we're really delighted to have Dr. Keyes with us as the speaker in favor of radiation therapy. When I first got this, it was high risk. They added intermediate risk. I was like, wait a minute, I didn't put intermediate risk slides. So we're gonna, I'm gonna focus on high risk disease, but uh, you'll get the theme. And let's make sure I stay on time. High risk disease, many different uh, definitions. The most common that I think we still use is D'Amico high risk, PSA over 20, Gleason sum of eight, clinical stage T2C. But there are others. And now that we go into grade group four, grade group five, primary Gleason grade five, much higher risk than standard D'Amico high risk. So really the definition of high risk is key and the outcomes after various forms of treatment, the likelihood of salvage and additional treatments really depends on the, uh, on the definition of high risk. So, but I'll comment on here, these are my opinions, that surgery is the optimal treatment of high-risk prostate cancer for well-selected patients who are safe to undergo surgery. Robotic prostatectomy is oncologically equivalent to open prostatectomy. Uh, many adverse pathologic patients are cured with surgery, and many others benefit from adjuvant and early salvage ADT and radiation. And in patients with advanced disease, there's evidence suggests the prostate should be treated, not strong evidence how it should be treated. The best evidence is actually in favor of, of radiation therapy for men with uh, advanced disease. So what's the rationale in favor of surgery for high-risk disease? You'll often hear the narrative, wait a minute, I've, I've heard I'm going to get salvage radiation therapy anyway. Why would I put myself through surgery and radiation? Well, let's just go straight to radiation therapy. And I do think that that rationale is a little flawed and misses some of the benefits of surgery. I think there's improved pathologic staging and risk assessment. There's effective adjuvant and early salvage therapy exists at relatively low morbidity. There is improved local control. There's fewer ureteral obstructions and lower number of urinary procedures at progression. So why not? Incontinence risk is the differentiating risk of surgery versus ADT and IMRT or whichever radiation therapy we're using. Um, really, significant incontinence does not occur anything like as frequently with combination radiation therapy as it does with surgery. So if you can do surgery with relatively low risk of stress incontinence, um, if you can't, or if the patient's at high risk of stress incontinence because of age and comorbidities, then I think surgery is probably not the right treatment. And it may not be beneficial if there's gross positive margins or bulky residual disease. The goal with surgery should be complete disease eradication, particularly from the local site. Serious complications, surgical complications must be avoided, and, and they absolutely mitigate the benefit. If a patient's getting readmitted to the hospital, or having significant incontinence or other uh, struggles, then uh, uh, the advantage of surgery is, is null. So let's talk a little bit about comparative risk-adjusted mortality data. And this has all of the challenges of retrospective analyses. But I do think there's some value to looking at these studies. So CAPTURE, 7,500 men, a parametric survival model to compare survival across treatments adjusting for risk and age. Um, the hazard ratio for cause-specific mortality compared to surgery was 2.21 for all forms of radiation therapy, 3.22 for hormonal therapy, showing that local therapy was effective, uh, more effective than uh, uh, systemic therapy. The absolute difference is small for low-risk men, but increased with disease risk. That's why my, my opinion is that surgery is particularly valuable for younger men with higher risk disease. These are the curves. This low there's a Kaplan-Meier uh, curve. It's actually Catan versus 10-year uh, cancer-specific survival. The blue is uh, surgery. Red is radiation therapy. Green is uh, hormonal therapy. Um, this is the results uh, looking at overall survival with a competing uh, risk regression analysis adjusting by CAPRA rather than Catan. Really similar results. So a different organization uh, looked at a very similar analysis, 2,380 patients at Sloan Kettering uh, and Baylor uh, with radiation therapy and sur surgery. Surgery was actually at Baylor or Sloan Kettering. All the radiation was at Sloan Kettering. One of the criticism of the prior study, because it had a long follow-up, had inadequate radiation doses, and that's a fair criticism because the randomized trials showing the effectiveness of increased doses are relatively recent. 
So this is eight-year probability freedom from METS was 97% with radical, 93% from IMRT. Those differences could be selection. But after adjusting for case mix, surgery reduced the risk of metastases significantly. Hazard ratio of 0.35. Results were similar for prostate cancer-specific mortality. The magnitude, the magnitude of these differences would be difficult to explain based on risk stratification, said the authors in the study. This is Catan, preoperative five-year recurrence-free probability, and the uh, predicted eight-year probability of METs, again, surgery and radiation therapy. So this is actually looking at uh, comparison of mortality after radical prostatectomy versus radiation in population-based study. This is uh, nearly 70,000 patients between 92 and 05. Criticism of this study, in all fairness, is perhaps not modern techniques of radiation therapy, propensity score matching, competing risk analysis, testing the effect on cancer-specific and all-cause mortality. The other interesting thing about this study is it showed the power of comorbidity adjustment. So let's show the data. Again, this is mortality rate, this is cause-specific uh, survival between surgery and radiation, and this is um, uh, uh, this is overall survival, or I'm sorry, other cause mortality between surgery and radiation. And again, this is the entire cohort. This is the high-risk patients showing much more prostate cancer-specific mortality. This is low-risk, not much prostate cancer. Most people are dying of other causes. But you see, when you get into high-risk disease, uh, surgery tended to do better than radiation, and more patients, of course, are having negative cancer outcomes. The interesting part of this study was the power of age and comorbidity index. So these curves are similar to what I just showed, um, cause-specific and um, other cause mortality here. This is Carl Charleston comorbidity index 2, 1, whoops, oh, let me see if I can go back. Okay, this is 2, 1, and 0, so these are healthy patients. Um, this is age 60, 65, 69, 70 to 74, 75 to 80. And so what you see here is um, the higher comorbidity has more other cause mortality. And so, um, you know, basically if the patient is younger and does not have significant cardiovascular mortality, then the importance of treatment, you know, is more significant. And so this just says, you know, the value of treating patients with high cardiovascular mortality and advanced age is much more limited than younger patients with better cardiovascular disease. Kind of makes sense. And then this is just making the point that even patients with adverse pathology do remarkably well. So this is the um, uh, long-term outcome of patients with lymph node metastases treated with radical without adjuvant androgen deprivation therapy. And it basically makes the point that um, only about a third, or, or, excuse me, two-thirds of the patients had biochemical recurrence. About 28% were free from biochemical recurrence. And so it's, it's kind of remarkable that even node-positive patients, this is their METS-free survival. Now, many of them recur biochemically, but their survival is pretty prolonged, even uh, starting with surgery with very adverse pathologic features. Okay. And finally, symptomatic progression is reduced with treatment of the primary in men with progressive metastatic disease. So it's no small uh, matter to say that local recurrence is less burdensome and less frequent in patients who start with surgery. This is local prostate treatment, radical versus radiation versus no local treatment. This is the chance of late complications when they have castrate-resistant prostate cancer, and you see the protective effect of radical prostatectomy. So it's one of the factors where I really prefer surgery for younger men with higher risk disease because that local recurrence issue is uh, significant in my opinion. So in my view, patients treated with radical prostatectomy fare substantially better than those treated with radi radiation therapy. Those with high-risk prostate cancer tend to benefit the most. Conversely, the lowest benefit is observed with patients with low to intermediate risk prostate cancer or multiple comorbidities. And I think those patients can reasonably be managed with either surgery or radiation therapy. Okay, let me stop there. <laughs>